uh, Karen O'Malley and Matt Beckhaus from For Pulse International, who will present about uh, dog meat trade in Asian countries, current status and its challenges. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, go. please. Thank yeah. you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would just like to take this opportunity uh, to thank you for enjoying, inviting not just only myself, but for Four Paws International uh, to present at the first animal welfare conference here in Indonesia. It is a great honor to be here, be on this great panel uh, and part of this prestigious event. Um, as mentioned, my name is Karen O'Malley and I am the program manager for Four Paws' campaign to end the dog and cat meat trade in Southeast Asia. So following on from the previous presentation, which has provided a really great insight into the dog meat trade in Indonesia, I'm going to speak a little more about the dog and cat meat trade more widely across the region. Um, but I would like to mention much of the content is an extension and a reflection um, of the presentation that's just been given. Next slide, thank you. So you may be wondering, why am I here presenting today at an animal welfare conference on the dog and cat meat trade? Well, let's explore this connection a little further. So just in terms of the scale of the dog and cat meat trade, every year it is estimated that over 30 million dogs and cats are captured, tortured and killed for their meat in Asia, making it arguably one of the most compelling welfare issues facing companion animals today. In the Southeast Asian countries of Cambodia, Vietnam and Indonesia alone, the number of dogs and cats involved is staggering, accounting for an estimated total of over 10 million animals being killed for their meat each year. Next slide. For those of you who may be less familiar, all aspects of the dog and cat meat trade involve extreme levels of cruelty. Our investigations have shown dogs and cats to be transported long distances, sometimes on journeys lasting for days, usually packed tightly into cages without food, water or rest, and often suffering from injury and disease. Slaughter methods can vary, and these have been touched on already, but can include bludgeoning with a heavy metal pipe, drowning and electrocution. Again, the animals can often spend days in cages at slaughterhouses, holding areas and restaurants without food or water, witnessing the brutal deaths of other animals whilst they await their fate. Next slide. As Matt's mentioned earlier on today and has been covered, you know, in terms of the other presentations of One Health and One Welfare, the animal welfare issues associated with the dog and cat meat trade are enormous and constitute an unrecognizable reason to terminate the trade. But it's not only animal welfare that's at stake. The trade presents implications for animal health, health, human health and welfare. For example, I think it's been mentioned as well from Levin's presentation, there is a recognized link between the dog meat trade and rabies, making it incompatible with national, global and global rabies elimination strategies, such as zero by 30. In addition, exposure to extremely violent slaughter methods has the potential to affect the psychological welfare of adults, children, and the tourists that witness them. And all of these considerations can be seen to have a negative impact on a country's reputation across the globe. Next slide, please. Recognizing this negative impact, Measures have been taken in some countries in Southeast Asia, with national governments and local authorities implementing new laws and enforcing an existing bans against the trade. In line with public sentiment, national dog meat bans exist in Hong Kong, the Philippines, Taiwan, Thailand and Singapore. Next slide, please. So in this vein and forming the basis of Four Pauses approach to address the issue, we are campaigning for other countries in the region to follow suit. To that end, Four Paws launched its campaign to end the dog and cat meat trade in 2019, focusing on three countries, Vietnam, Cambodia, and in coalition with our friends here in DMFI here in Indonesia. And I'll touch on each of these countries later. Next slide, please. Ultimately, 
we are seeking to urge national governments to introduce legislation and regulation that will bring an end to the capture, slaughter and consumption of dogs and cats. We believe that change can be achieved by building on a number of drivers. And these include garnering international and local public and political support, working with the local authorities, which Addy has just mentioned is important, and recognising the reputational risks that the dog and cat meat trade brings engaging with the tourism industry. Since the campaign's launch, 1.8 million people across the globe have signed our petition, including over 250,000 signatures from Vietnamese and Cambodian people. Whilst here in Indonesia, a staggering 1.2 million people have signed DMFI's petition calling for the Indonesian government to ban the trade in and slaughter of dogs and consumption of dog meat throughout Indonesia. Really incredible levels of support. Next slide, please. In addition, and as part of the DMFI coalition, <laughs> Indonesia, and through our work with partners, Four Paws has rescued over 135 dogs and cats from the trade, closed four slaughterhouses, and supported the livelihood conversions of slaughterhouse owners into more sustainable and cruelty-free futures, fundamentally saving the lives of animals, thousands of animals every year. Next slide, please. So Vietnam for us is a key country for the campaign as it's got a very large number of dogs and cats involved in the trade, an estimated 5 million dogs and 1 million cats are killed every year for their meat. One of our successes includes a signed MOU between Four Paws and the Hoi An authorities to phase out the dog and cat meat trade and further develop Hoi An as a tourist friendly city. Recognising the positive benefits of phasing out the trade, the vice chairman of Hoi An People's Committee stated that as a popular tourist destination, they want to help promote animal welfare through rabies eradication, phase out the dog and cat meat trade, and make the city a premier destination for tourism. Next slide. While in Cambodia, it is estimated that 3 million dogs are killed for their meat every year. And as a result of our campaigning efforts, positive steps forward have been made by authorities to end the trade in the country. Next slide. Such an example of where the authorities have recognised the risks of the dog and cat meat trade is in Siem Reap, Cambodia, Cambodia's well-known hot, tourist hotspot. In July 2020, you may be aware that Siem Reap authorities banned the dog meat trade across the province and since then have made continued efforts to enforce it. In 2021, with Four Paws' support, the first government-led interception and confiscation of 61 dogs destined for slaughter took place. More recently this year, the CM Reap authorities confiscated and destroyed 1.3 tonne of dog meat that was being transported through the province. While here in Indonesia, an estimated 1 million dogs are killed for their meat annually. Thanks to the tireless efforts of the DMFI coalition, of which Four Paws is proud to be a member, very positive steps forward have been made, with achievements being very well documented during the previous presentation. As a small recap, in 2022 alone, 19 citizen regencies across four provinces have passed directives prohibiting the dog meat trade. And as Addy mentioned, evidence provided by DMFI have led to very successful prosecutions of those illegally involved in the trade. Next slide, please. So to conclude, I'm hoping from this presentation that I've demonstrated some of the positive steps that have and continue to be taken to end the dog and cat meat trade at city, regency and provincial level in Cambodia, Vietnam and in Indonesia, all receiving positive global recognition. These movements have come about as the local authorities have recognised and acknowledged the risks of the dog and cat meat trade, whether that be from animal welfare, human health or reputational perspective. That said, banning the dog and cat meat trade at national level would achieve the greatest impact for millions of dogs and cats every year across the region. And through our collaborative campaigning activities, we will continue to urge governments to take action. Thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure to present here today, and I look forward to speaking with you further throughout the day. Thank you.
Okay, uh, thank you, Karen and Matt. Backhouse, would you like to uh, give additional presentation? No. Okay.